So I want to thank you real quick. Uh, Goring 20s month. This is something that uh, after the Forsaken month we had on the channel, we wanted to do a Goring 20s month. And, oh, um, okay, cool. So we're celebrating uh, stories from uh, – uh, we're taking a trip down memory lane is what we're calling it. You know, what better – Got it. What better way, you know? And, and I think the Goring 20s to me, um, since its inception, right – um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's such a unique zone. Um, and I can only imagine being part of that. I mean, how, how special is that for you, especially in the 50th, the Goring twenties, this, 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 I look at it as like the party zone right there. That's, that's where you have the most fun in my opinion. Uh, I mean, for me, for sure. Uh, it's the most immersive zone I feel in the park other than ghost town, just because ghost town does have its standing sets, you know? Right. Um, but I feel like, um, for me, like as far as party goes, obviously the theme is the party. Yeah. Um, but I guess for me, for the, I, I, I've been in Goring prior to the 50th and I guess being in it for the 50th was important to me because, you know, there were a lot of options for the 50th i guess you know a lot there was a new zone opening um every year with auditions you can kind of go wherever you want and i did contemplate going home so to speak to the gauntlet because the gauntlet was where was was a a, a, a zone that i i spent a good portion of my scare time in but there was just something that i was like mm, i i love this place <laughs> like i love the interaction i love the the fact that like we get to jaw like we get to we are encouraged to talk interact be immersive in that zone um within character within world and f as a theater nerd like and an acting nerd um given being given the absolute opportunity and full reign to how do i put it um like always be in world and and be the one that's holding that suspension of disbelief for the guests. Like, cause the guest is gonna come in there in 2023, October 15th, right? In Goring 20s, we are stuck in the day that we died in the 1920s. Right. So you got people coming up to you and they're like making in world references or making um jokes that are current to pop culture and you kind of just get to be like what are you talking about like right I, or like you guys are dead like, like what we're not dead are you dead i'm not dead and you get to totally like and they look at you like you're absolutely nuts but <laughs> that's kind of the fun of it because they're like what i remember my first year um there was a group of kids that came up and would my my preacher at the time was disraeli and he was so great because I, I called him the Michael Caine of scare actors. He <laughs> took it so seriously and was just always on a thousand committed that he would have kids come up to him and challenge him and his face wouldn't break. His like persona wouldn't break. Um, he would just be in his preacher and you would get kids 12, 13, 14 year olds looking at him going, give this man a raise, like give this guy, <laughs> there's no way, like, oh, oh my God. Like, and, and I just, as his partner hearing that was just like, it would just get me all excited and giggly. Cause I was like, <laughs> like it, to me, that's the fun of what we do yeah, or the fun of what, what some of us get to do, you know? What, what a great way to uh, open the show right here, by the way. I mean, I, I love the energy already. I love the, uh, the stories and, and, and the love for the, the zone. Uh, you mentioned you're a theater nerd. So, so was I in high school, you know, that was, I loved everything and being involved in the production of building something and from the ground up, you know, and, um, yeah. you know, I, I can relate to that. I, I was literally just having this conversation with my, my coworker the other day that like, you know, to, to watch a production be built from like the audition day to like the first rehearsal to, you know, little by little building everything. Then, then as, as you start rehearsing, you start seeing sets being built and then you start seeing it being dressed and then, you know, the sound and lighting comes in and then opening night, we're finally there, you know, and it's, it's really a magical experience to see, you know, it, it, it goes hand in hand with haunt, you know, it's, it's a really magical experience to see kind of that, 
that before and then that after. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys if you guys don't know already, you should know. We, we're sitting here with a very talented, in my opinion, the current face of the Goring Twenties, uh, Jenny. <laughs> um, she may disagree, but I mean, I I I, I have to say. You are probably one of the biggest standout characters in that zone, and it doesn't go unforgotten. We've been we've been talking here at the Knights of Horror about having you on for a podcast for some time now, and I'm glad we finally get to do it. Oh my God, I'm so so flattered. Um, I I you gotta understand when I'm out there, I am watching my fellow scare actors. I I'm in my opinion, I've had the absolute honor and opportunity to scare and interact with some of the great scare actors that I think are current, um, Turbo or Court, um, Elijah, the bartender, he's great. I mean, I would argue that he's the face of Goring Twenties, um, Sal or Clayton Diaz, uh, that plays, uh, the gangster, uh, that, that I've had, uh, the honor to be with for three seasons now. He's on a shirt, yo. Like, he's yeah. um, on the Scarapoli. Like, to me, him and Ica are the faces. Rick, Cr uh, Creeper, or, you know, Benny, the Brick. Um, to me, they're the faces. Um, Yuri uh, or, or Thorin, um, you know, uh, he's he plays one of our gin runners. To me, those are the faces. Uh, I, Andrew and I are Sister Faith and Brother Silas, <laughs> like... I want to say we're the antagonists of the zone in a way. Like we're the one that is constantly fighting. We're kind of the, the, to me, I, I guess I see ourselves as the, the, yeah, like the villains of the zone, right? Everybody's there to party and be yeah. debaucherous and we're, you know, and uh, I think that the fun tongue in cheek of the way that we approach the characters is, we pull from maybe the not so religious in the real world, right? The people that present themselves as religious and godly, but we all know what they're doing behind doors. We all know that where the money's going, we all, right. you know, and we play that to a thousand. Um, <laughs> it's the funnest thing that we get to do out there. So I, I very much recognize, take and glean the compliment but I, I personally do not see myself as the face of the zone, but I thank you so much. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, yeah, and you and mentioned so many amazing names there. They, they're, it, it's a, there's so much talented people in this zone. Yeah, you're right. Everyone, there's everyone that plays their part and that has a piece of bringing that zone to life and, and telling that story of memory lane and, and really kind of immersing the guest into this, in this world that you guys are living, you know, and, it's so um, it's so amazing every year, and I always say it. I I, I was talking to um, we had Martin on the show, and we were talking about you know just the, you know the overall size of the zone too. Um, for for how small it is and and how well lit it is, you guys honestly you make the most out of it. You guys make it look like it's it's freaking. You know, you you guys make it look like it's the biggest thing in the world, and I, I just and that for me right there is like there is no part of this zone that is going unused there is something that someone will will find a way to like use it and utilize it to their to their advantage i mean yeah even the newsies i i was unaware of shimmy the lamppost and the story that the newsy kids um created with jimmy and like i would see it on tiktok or i would see them like do it like in passing but I hadn't realized there was like a whole narrative to it. And I hadn't realized that like this last season, because we went from an A to B cast to one cast, I started to get to not only work with people that I hadn't gotten to work with in previous seasons, but narratives that I wasn't aware that other people created. And it was so fun. Once I realized that, that some of the Newsy kids they, they are playing 12, 13 year old little boys and urchins that I was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Like you guys are all little tiny. I, I don't know if I can curse, so you can warn me, but all these, you guys are little bastards, like kids, like, oh my God, that is so just a different way that I'm going to interact with you. You know, um, I know the flappers and the cigar girls were kind of meant to be these femme fatales and these like sexy, sultry girls, but even the girls from the first season by halfway once they brought up their aggression, once they kind of brought up 
that monster that can that can uh, come across in a femme fatale kind of character. Like think Jennifer's body, like um, uh, Suspiria, that kind of. Uh, even I would say uh, Florence Pugh in one of my favorite horror movies. Um, uh, why am I blanking? Summer. On the name right now. So, yes, on Midsummer. You know, there's this quiet stillness about her character, but like, there's such an angst to it. She's going through so much, and you get these like gleams of emotion out of her. And the Flapper Girl started doing that. The Cigar Girl started to be mean and aggressive and not just so sexy and sultry and playing this one note that and a perfect example of that is iris or um uh little um oh my god why am i why am i blanking on her real name right now um she plays iris lynch is the name of her character and i only know that morgan thank you (laughs) morgan stout um little red-eyed morgan right she is a beast out there for as tiny as she looks and as cute as she is, out there as Iris, she is all aggression, all just scare, all just fury. Wow. And I can't even like be around her or interact with her because I just want to watch and and watch her. I want to watch her yell at guests. I want to watch her dress down guests. Like, and it's amazing as one cast. It's harder on the body, but being able to see all that nuance that happens within the zone that maybe even the guests miss in the five minutes as they're going to the next maze or getting to the theater. But as an actor and as somebody that's got to live there every night, and every night's different. Every night's just something else to discover. Every night is another opportunity to play. And Nameless was one was so funny because at the beginning, or Martin, at the beginning of... The season, and he was very much in his character, very much in his thing. Uh, and then as it progressed, he would tumble through the streets. I think at one point he became a prohibitionist, which was hilarious. <laughs> um, Andrew and I had so many props that the big wooden signs that um, Knotts had provided to us that were beautiful, but can get very heavy very quickly. Right we took it upon ourselves to replace with fabric signs that we can like run through the the zone with. And if somebody happened to run into it, they weren't going to hurt themselves. Right. Um, Right. And so that left all those big wooden gin is a sin signs and, you know, lips that touch liquor will not touch ours. And those beautiful signs that, that knots provided other people were using. So then all of a sudden one night, the jazz singer, was a prohibitionist and yelling at people about um, about what, you know, you're always drunk when you come to my show and I'm tired of it and da da da. And I was just like, oh my God, what is going on? <laughs> like, it takes me a second to react, but it's just like, oh, okay, so now you're on my side? Okay, cool, we can play with this. Yeah. Now there's a group of us, and it's not just myself and Andrew and Magic, um, who plays the banker. Um, trying to connive people out of their money and get them to be sober. Uh, so that's the nuance that I love about the zone that uh, that will keep me there. That because I've I have scared in all the other zones. I've scared in Boardwalk, not as a clown, but I've I scared in Boardwalk. I scared in Camp Snoopy. I scared in, in in Ghost Town. I have never experienced the level of immersion that happens in Goring Twenties. Right, and that to me is unparalleled as an actor, as an entertainer. That's unparalleled. Yeah, no, and I, and I agree with you. And 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 like I said, there, I think there are very few zones that you know in, in the. I, I'll I'll even say in the world that actually um, do what Goring Twenties does. I, I I think, you know, when when coming up with the concept of an idea to have a a Roaring Twenties themed uh, scare zone. You know, it, it, there's probably a lot that went into it like, OK, how are we going to kind of really accomplish this, bring this to life? What really helped, I think, too, in the last couple of years is them kind of revamping that area to look at more fit of, of a theme. Um, you know, the mm-hmm. adding of the pizzeria and then just that kind of looks like those big industrial buildings you used to see back in the 20s and stuff. Um, and I think that the, really brings out a lot of boards. immersions. 
Yeah. Billboards. Yeah. And all like the, you know, the paintings on the walls, you know, there's, there's one wall that has like those old, you know, old school paintings that you would see that would be fading off and stuff. Um, I just think they really invested a lot into going into that, uh, you know, that area alone. And then it's a good payoff and investment to enhance that experience with the Goring twenties. And, you know, we were, there'd be nights we would walk through there and, and we would see a lot of this stuff that you're talking about. And it's just, it's hilarious because you didn't know what you were going to walk into on a given night, whether it was you screaming at me to, to like, uh, you know, about, about something that don't drink, no drinking and all that stuff and all that. Or if it was, you know, mobsters trying to get something out of me, you know, it, it was just, there was always something, you know, and, 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 and I think that was the vibe of it. I mean, I've, I've loved watching the zone grow to what it is today. It feels like this story yeah. every year just continues to expand. And, you know, that first year was like, okay, this is us laying the foundation down. We're trying to figure everything out. Second year coming back was like, all right, let's add to it. You know, and then, and then another year it was like, okay, let's add more to it. And like, you know, the, you know, the, the 50th obviously was just that year that with everything going on with this big milestone for this, you know, this, massive haunt you know and and to see that not only did you guys got a, a couple new faces on the on the street which was really cool to see too um yeah but to overall just see the vibe of everyone you know you could tell everyone was here having a good time for the 50th and and really just giving it their all i, I especially love it i and i know you guys have a great time doing this i've seen many videos on it i've seen it in person i love it when you guys all dance together that's that to me is just like to me is, is a great experience for not only you guys as, you know, as also fans of the event too, but you know, you guys, uh, you know, work in the, the event as, as talent. And then also, you know, at, inter, and that's another way to interact with the guests, you know, I mean, and you get the guests involved yeah. and it's, and that's amazing. It, it, it really fills up the entire street. Like, tell me what it's like to, to, to be in part of moments like, like that, to be a part of moments of, of, of guest experience. So the fun part is, for me, the character, the prohibitionist, when the characters were given, and I think I've mentioned this before in other spaces, that I was told that they would be victim characters. They weren't necessarily supposed to be standouts. They weren't necessarily, you know, I was supposed to be in beauty makeup, so to speak. Um, and luckily, the people at the helm at the time uh, I said, hey, I'm down to do this because who these characters are based off of are really interesting to me. Um, but do you mind if I bring my own? Because I'm always going to want a monster. I'm always going to. You can take the girl out of the costume, but you're never going to take the monster out of me. Like, that's just not going to happen. Right. <laughs> um, so when they gave me that liberty, um, the first year it was playing her very pious, very righteous. When people would dance, Disraeli and I would just scoff and like, we would, all we would do is literally stand during the band sets and just glare at people. <laughs> and, and people responded to that. But the second year when I got Andrew, and so I, I compared, I compared Disraeli to Michael Caine in the Muppets. Um, Andrew and I are Tim Curry in like Muppets Treasure Island. We're just part of the Muppets. Like we're about it. And we, what happened one night was um, we'd lost our voices. Oh no. And we no longer had any way to preach. But what we had played with was the dancers from the first season, the dancers up on the balconies, they were holding up these martini glasses that had this brilliant glow about them. And one day in passing, I was just like, you know what? I'm so sorry to bother you, but what is that? And she was super gracious and was like, oh, it's just an LED I got off of Amazon. We just wanted a focal point for when we were doing this particular number. And I said, you know what? It is so brilliant. Do you mind if I glean that, if I take that and just add it as an element to my costume? And she was, oh yeah, please go ahead. And so I bought like a 12 pack of these little immersible waterproof LEDs. And um, I only needed one because my idea was, oh, I'm gonna put it on my bell. So it looks like my bell is glowing from the inside. I'm gonna put it on my little vial of holy water. So it looks like I'm carrying around glowing elixir. 
That's all, yeah. And the rest of the cast was like, oh my God, Jen, that's so cool. What is it? And I was like, oh, it's just these things. And I had like another 10. So the dancers put them in their top hats. The, um, you know, the, the, the other like newsies and stuff, they would like try to find a way to put them in their hats or something. And so that was the first year. Well, the second year, the first weekend where Andrew and I lost our voices, um, we were like, crap, what are we going to do? Like, we, we literally cannot go out there and preach. I have no voice. You have no voice. Like, how do we get around this? And so we remembered the lights and I don't know what possessed, <laughs> no pun intended, but total pun intended. Um, I don't know what possessed me to like throw it in my mouth. I threw it in my mouth. And I just started to like bare my teeth at people. And although I couldn't vocalize, I could like retch. I could like. <gasps> so all of a sudden, the sister became the possessed sister. So when the light was in my mouth, that's what happened. We then, when the dance that started happening, we were like, oh my God, we can be you know, imbibed by the Holy Spirit when this is happening. And now we can dance. And so that's what we started uh -huh. doing. We would, like, if you watch it, Andrew and I will glare at people and be like, no, no, no. And then all of a sudden we'll start like, holy rolling. And people will be like, ooh, sister, you're dancing. And I'm like, I am praising. That is a different thing. I am being devout for the Lord. Like, because Southern Baptist preachers would tap dance. Yeah. They would hold big, high, holy rollers. And that was an element that we brought in last year that was just, it gave us the liberty to not have to just stand by and watch everybody have fun. We could join in on it too. And it was still in world. It still informed a personality trait to our characters. And it was just more fun. I mean, so you, you I mean, you, you talked about that light and I, and I, and I'm glad you brought it up. Cause I was going to ask about it. Cause I think that when I first saw that, I thought that that was one of the most genius things I've ever seen, especially with that zone. Uh, you, oh my gosh! You know it's it's so full credit to the dancers, man. Yeah, I mean, and, and to hear that backstory of where it came from, I mean, it's it's so cool of the 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 kind of ladder it went down to to get to the actual zone. It went from being on part of the stage show to now you're it's in the zone. Now it's incorporated kind of everywhere. Um, and I think mm -hmm. really Knotts has been taking advantage of that and kind of acknowledging that more and more to kind of sell that you know that selling point of the devil's elixir and everything and and everything. And I think that you guys just just kind of taking it upon yourselves and just doing it, you know, and just kind of rolling with it and having fun with it. I think that's what makes these things so much fun. And just to kind of further immerse the guests into the, the idea that the devil's elixir is taking over everything. Well, so for me, it's so funny because we saw that the drink was the devil's elixir and they made it red, which I understand because devil usually red associated, right. but if it's supposed to be our devil's elixir, why didn't you guys use Midori Sour and make it green? Right. Why didn't you use Apple Pucker and make it green? Yeah, I mean, there's so many. So little known. Yeah. If not just listening, hey, maybe next year. Like a little, little new ingredient. Spice it up a little bit, you know? Make it accurate. Yeah. Accurate. We want some accuracy, man. I, 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 I've seen them before. <laughs> I think Knott's should go all in and 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 buy the the ice cubes that actually look that that have LEDs in them. I think that if you throw one in that there, glow in them. yeah, I mean it will really sell that marketing point. It would it would honestly make me want to buy one just so I can have that cube. Um, exactly. <laughs> but you know, I I think it's brilliant that that you do that, and, and and you know what, it showed especially last year. I saw Forsaken Lake starting to do it now. Um, and it's just incredible to see that it's it's going across the park and they're doing it with their respective colors um, and, and to be to kind of immerse in that. But I mean, it, it, it all kind of started right there in the goring 20s, you know, that and, and to see you do that. I mean, I, I'll be honest, once you're in it and you and you kind of you show the light and everything and you're preaching and, and everything, it it's kind of terrifying to kind of see. And I and I think it's it's terrifying <laughs> in a good way. So, I mean, whatever you're doing, do keep doing it. It's 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 working. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. But I actually want to I want to talk about that. So I can't take full credit to the light out out in the streets. The first person I think I ever saw use a glow like that huh, glow <laughs> um, was our own 
Ghost Town Bride, yeah. that candle. Yeah, yeah. And when she first used that candle, you saw all of a sudden everybody else was using a candle. Yes. Um, so I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, like when Andrew and I did it and we just heard the response from the guests, we just heard them. Oh my God. Like, did you see that? Their faces are glowing. Oh my God. We looked at each other and we were like, well, we can't give this up now. Like, <laughs> we were, we were literally like just doing it to preserve our voices. And, but when we felt the guest response, it was like, well, now we have to do this. <laughs> um, so we kept doing it and everybody kept coming up to me and being like, how are you doing it? How are you doing that? I am not a gatekeeper. I am never going to be like, well, that is my gimmick and you can't do yeah. that. I've never been that kind of a, not, not only have I never been that kind of an actor, like I've just never been that kind of, like everybody slides and, but everybody brings their own spin to sliding. No two sliders are alike, right? right? So to me, the mouth glow, the only thing when people, when, uh, who was the first one to ask? I want to say it was a talent in ghost town was the first one to ask. And the only thing I said to her was, can you just make it a color informed into your area? Like, just don't make it green. Right. Like, so if you're in ghost town, maybe purple. Um, and then I think when people saw it happening, you know, Destiny and Levy messaged me in, I think on Instagram and was like, Hey, what is it that you use in your mouth? I sent her the link, blah, blah, blah. Same thing. Just don't use a green one. Like use a blue one. A blue one would be great and forsaken. Right. Um, little Mike, um, who was, I see, what is his haunt name? He was a drummer in the gauntlet this year. And, um, he, uh, he messaged me and he was like, Jenny, what was that light you used? I sent him the link that I buy on Amazon. <laughs> and I was like, okay, if you're in camp, like, I was like, I would suggest blue. I was like, maybe even red. Cause I don't think anybody's using red, yeah. but then somebody in carnival incorporated red. a light onto their costume. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, there it is. I was like, so it's not about, it's not about like, I have to use the green one. No, because the green witch could absolutely use a green one. Right. Um, if she wanted to incorporate that. But to me, it's about, it's not about the gimmick. It's how it informs your character, the immersive storyline, and what you're doing out there with it. Right. Wholeheartedly agree with that. And, um, because I see yeah. that around, you see that with everybody. I mean, everybody, you know, especially when, when and, I, I always will say the same thing about like, you know, you talk about there's no two sliders, you know, it's the same thing with characters. You know, there may be uh, a bunch mm -hmm. of clowns or a bunch of different characters that may look alike, but they're not the same characters. Like they all have their own personalities. Mm -hmm. They all have their own backstories. And, and I think that's the, that's what, I think that's what makes an event like not so, uh, so with so much freedom is the fact that you have that freedom to come in and, you know, you are given this character, but you can kind of take it and make it your own and kind of really decide whether or not you want to stand out or if you want to just kind of uh, continue to sell the story. But either way, I think you are selling that story and you are standing out no matter what you do, whether you just choose to just scare or if you really want to immerse into a story. Like, I, that's what I love about Knots is you can literally flip that switch when you want to. And mm -hmm. I think it's that that's what makes it so fun for me as as far as like watching you guys do it, because the, there'll be nights where I'll just stand off to the side just to watch you guys and and to kind of see you guys flip that switch of, of telling a story to one guest and then scaring another guest in the middle of that and then going back to that story. It's like they just flip the switch three times and we just watch that happen with our own eyes. Absolutely. And I think, I you know, I've been doing this for a long time now. I've been home haunts at this point. Uh, people have asked me, like, why don't you go do Universal? Why don't you go do, you know, when it was around, why don't you go do Queen Mary? Um, and from what I've heard from other actors that have come from those places and gone to knots, parameters are very stringent. Parameters are very, like, this is what you're doing. Like, especially at Universal. Yeah. It's very, within the mazes, it's very, like, you're hitting this mark and back. You're hitting this mark and back. And I'm just like, the pay may be better. It may be all of these other things. The break rooms may be nicer, but nobody gives us the liberty as actors that Knotts does. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, yeah. And that to me is worth its weight in gold. Yeah. 
and 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 you know you know this too uh, obviously being a, an actor and kind of in that realm of the theater of the theater realm and everything uh improvisation is a huge uh thing with this job with this you know with this this role and everything um and it's just kind of being quick and on the spot of things and just kind of moving on to the next thing um do you have a lot of improvisation background or was that something that was something that kind of a struggle for you when you first came into the, into the haunt world or was it something that you were kind of like, Oh, that's just easy. I, I kind of know what I'm doing with that one. Um, so no, I, I theater kid from very young improv classes. Uh, I used to dream about being on SNL. Um, cool. I grew up watching in living color, mad TV. So sketch comedy was something that um, I really loved. Um, I gleaned from the greats like Lucille Ball, Carol Burnett, um, you know, these women that pioneered comedy on television. And I was a poor kid. Like, I didn't get, I didn't have cable. I had whatever I had on yep. Sunday afternoons. So, um, you know, watching them be funny, irreverent, but still, like, smart with the things that they were saying, um, you know, uh, Lucille Ball was an absolute pioneer in Hollywood, but, you know, she was one of the first women producers, one of the first women to have um, her own production company with her husband, um, and she was an improv artist. Um, uh, Carol Burnett as well. Um, gosh, who else? Uh, Gilda Radner, uh, Rita Rudner. They're, like, I could go on and on and on. We could go into the Latinos and, like, La India Maria, if you are familiar with her. La Chilindrina, like these character actresses that I've looked up to since I was a very young girl that I've always wanted to strive to be like, um, but never felt like there was a place. Haunt gave me that place. When I found Knots and, and I started to see what it was as a show, not just um, not just a theme park, not just mazes, not just a skin zone, but a literal show that is happening and can change every night moment by moment that's the way i've always attacked my scare acting and i know it hasn't always been appreciated in the past uh people are like you're putting a lot into this and i'm just like that's just how i am like yeah. it's just, that's the fun of it for me right right no, I, I that, that to me that. is yeah yeah, it, it, it's so yeah, the, it is something to answer your question. It is something just I've always had. I've always attacked any character. Um, I'm a belly dancer, too, or I'm a dancer, I guess. And when I'm putting together a solo piece or a group piece, it is informed not only by the music, the costuming, the mood, the lighting. It's it's an entire thing. And I think when you attack your, your projects in that kind of full circle way, it just informs the whole performance. Yeah. And you know, and that's, and that's what I'm super like grateful and blessed for about getting the opportunity to do these, these podcasts is, you know, I've gotten to talk to so many, uh, so many people in the past about their experiences with haunt and just going to haunt, you know, and, and being that, that having, being a theater kid as well, you know, it was really cool. Like when I when I really started really getting into haunt, that it was like starting to notice the very the same similarities as it was to put on a live production. I was like, it's the exact same steps. It's it's literally a build process, uh, a, a script process. Uh, you know, like concept art, all that stuff. You know, you got the build process, then your painting process, propping, dressing, rehearsing, sound, lighting. Like it's all the same thing. Like it really is. Like it's it's what we're seeing in front of us, in my opinion, is a, a different form of live theater. Uh, I think. Yeah. Um, it, it, in the sense that you're being more immersed into multiple stories, but kind of all somehow tie in and that, and that's, you're going to go to see how they tie, especially this year with the 50th, you know, with everything kind of the witch and the train conductor walking around. I thought that was cool, you know, to see them interact with you guys yeah. other than just ghost town. Like that was awesome. Um, but it's just it's there's so much put into it that you're getting closer and closer and itching closer and closer to that opening night. And then when opening night comes, it's like, all right, it's showtime. Um, obviously, like most productions, you're going to run into some issues on opening night. That's just how it is. But as the season progresses or as your time progresses uh, doing said show, you start getting better and better and better and you start hitting all your marks, your cues. Um, 
And yeah, it's just, it's, it is, in a, you know, looking at it logistically behind the scenes, it is just an amazing process to see that, you know, from start to finish and, you know, for, for, to, to see from a guest point of view, and then obviously you get to see it from both a guest and um, a fan and a, and a scare actor point of view, like, it is really cool to see that behind the scenes because, you know, it's just there's so much that goes into it. I don't think a lot of people really know and appreciate that sometimes is that how much goes into, you know, right. not only what you guys put into the characters, but, you know, everything from costuming, all that stuff behind the scenes. There's so much that goes into this production. And ultimately, it comes down to uh, everyone getting together, putting this on and, and then trying to put the best show in the damn world that they can put on. And they do. They do every single year. I can't complain. I, I walk away every single year just wanting next year to come because I have so much fun, you know, watching you guys and 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 just looking forward to seeing who I'm going to talk to next about their experiences. It's just it's it is a beautiful thing, and uh, I'm just so thankful to be a part of it. I'm so thankful to get to know people like you to to um to tell you and share Aww. your stories. It's 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 awesome. I mean, I've been I've honestly like just to hear your passion of acting and and, and like that's how I am for film. Like I love the, everything that goes right. into film, you know, and just to watch film and just to understand what the director's vision was like i just love all of that and just to hear your passion for it on on an actor's point of view like it's it's awesome and i think it for a lot of us um it's over the course of my time there it's been a lot of struggle with legitimacy of what we do right. like it's a lot of like oh you're a carny or like oh my god you you, you risk your day job and your health and this for this like weird amusement park like thing like why and it's like I, if you don't get it there's nothing i'm gonna say to make you get right. it like you know um it's like the fish sticks jokes on south park with kanye like come on man just get yeah. it like like no there's nothing you're gonna be able to say to somebody that doesn't understand it that hasn't lived it um, that doesn't have that passion for right. it. I try to be very encouraging as a vet to the younger kids that come in um, because you are going to get that pushback. You are going to get people going like, what? You're a hot monster. How weird. And I think just recently, is it like, oh my God, you're doing that? That's so yeah. cool. And um, going back to you saying about um, a director's point of view, seeing it that way, it is no secret. If you know me, I love Kevin Smith. I've always dreamed about being in a Kevin Smith project. Yeah. Um, he is the man to me. And last year, uh, uh, when he was touring uh, Clerks okay. 3, um, and he does his Q&A at, um, at the end of each time he, uh, he was doing a filming, I went to go see him at the Grove and, you know, watch Clerks 3, which bunch of other kev heads just crying my eyes out and if you've seen it you know why we yeah were i do um, i do i was in that theater crying oh uh, yeah right right um we had a q a and i went i wanted to go ask him something but as fate would have it there was a home haunter about three spots ahead of me and if you've ever been to a kevin event um he might get to a third person if you're lucky because the guy loves to draw yeah. and he's so long winded. I feel like I have that in common with him. There's always a story to the story to the yeah. story. Um, and he, the home haunter asked him something to the effect of like, you know, what is it that you think I like my, my dream is to direct, but I'm currently doing this. How do you, how can I apply this to my bigger dream? And he was like, well, first of all, give yourself, give yourself the, the, the credit that you're already doing it. You're already creating an, an entertaining experience. You're already the director of this production that you are doing out of your house. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, first of all, second of all, um, what you guys do as haunted actors, as immersive artists, he's like, I tip my hat to y'all because what you guys do is way different than what I do. What I, he's like, I'm dictator of my sets. Like, like I am, you know, judge, jury, executioner. It is my controlled environment. I say who comes in, I say who comes out. 
you guys have to not only take somebody else's vision and make it come to life or your own vision. He's like, you got to deal with the public in an ever changing environment. And he's like, that's something I've never done. And for me sitting four or five rows behind or like four or five spots behind this kid, I was just like, I already got my answer. I got my answer. Like, I don't even got to ask my question now because it felt so validating to hear one of my heroes validate what I've done this whole time. And I've always felt that in my, the first night I met Kevin, he said, you know, I told him, I was like, I want to work with you. Like, I don't really want to be a celebrity. I like making pretend with my friends. I want to work with directors that I feel safe and, you know, are, are here for the art, not necessarily for the celebrity and his kind of rogue way of doing things and funding it himself, pu- publicizing, distributing himself. Um, is It makes me want to work with him in that way. And I told him that and he was like, well, first of all, babes, he's like, you shoot beyond me, like make me come to you. And, and as much as I appreciated that, I like what I wanted him to understand was, was that like, no, no, no. Like it's because of people like you that do things the way that you do them. You employ your friends, you employ your family. Um, you know, everything is done with the utmost of respect, even if it's a comedy, like, um, and he has such a passion for what he does. You want to work with those kind of people. I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to deal with, you know, six asshole directors to get to the one that I hope to work with when I know the guy's already where I want to be. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. So it's, so it's like for me watching, um, I think watching kids like come up, your duty as a vet within the haunt world is to instill that in them that like, this is a love and it is a passion project. Don't let anybody take that passion from you. Like Kevin says, if you are, if you go to somebody and you tell them, Hey, I want to do this thing. And they go, ew, why get away from that person? Because that person's got their own demons. They're fighting and you get to your, why not people? Okay. Why not? How can I help you do that? How that sounds like fun. Let's do the thing. So if you ever get to somebody that is like, oh, I, I'm 30 years old and I want to do sliding for the first time. And you go, oh my God, aren't you too old to do that? Get away from that person right now. That person is, is coming at you from a perspective of their own, of their own right. making, of their own right. demise. They've set their limits on themselves. Don't you let anybody else set, set predetermined or limits that they have on them. Don't let anybody do that to you. Yeah, and uh, but ever. By the way, ever. I'm still. Uh, uh, if Kevin is watching, I'm. I. I. I'm still waiting for Mallrats too. I want it really bad. Uh, <laughs> we're all waiting. We're all waiting for Twilight of Mallrats. I don't know if he's done production on it yet. I know he's. I know yeah. he's in, and I know currently he's writing. I think he's um, doing another. Yeah, he's Jane doing another Tyler Jane Bob, Bob movie. I think. Yeah. Three. Yeah. I heard that on on Hollywood so, Babylon. He talked yeah. about that. I think. Yeah. So he's he's still got a couple yeah. down the pipe. So just please don't. I'm not gonna lie. Don't give me Clerks three again though, because I'm just yeah. I don't want to cry that hard again. No, <laughs> no, no. He buttoned that up real yeah. good. But I let, let me tell you, I was real jealous of Kate McCucci being in that movie's costume. Oh, as a former Disneyland pageant super, being in a movie's costume, dream right? come true. Dream come there true. There it is. I mean. <laughs> You know, you, 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 that's, I mean, that's funny that you brought up obviously someone like Kevin Smith, cause he is also someone that I very much look up to. I, I, I think his way of storytelling awesome. is just incredible. And the way, like you said, the way he does it, you know, is, is very, it's very like intimate. He keeps it, you know, within his friends and his family. We've gotten introduced to so many great talents over the years. I mean, him and Ben Affleck were best friends growing up before Ben Affleck became who he is today, yeah. you know, and. You know, just to just to hear right. that where Ben, you know, and, and Kevin Smith now this he's this big global figure. Ben Affleck's this big actor. Matt Damon, too. There are these big actors and they were all friends growing up, you know, and right. to see the success of all that, you know. And so it, it's really, you know, and- I, I think it's super when, when you when you have a, a director that says something like that, you know, and, and that throws the appreciation to where the art is, you know, I mean, he knows that 
yes, that is a form of entertainment, of course, like a live production of something. It's obviously not what I do because I'm working with cameras, I'm working with crews. And, you know, like he said, he's the dictator of his set. He gets to determine what goes, what comes in and out. But, you know, yeah, it, it, the challenge for you guys is getting something that Knott's prepared for you guys and wrote for you guys and everything, and then kind of spinning that and then going with, how can I make this mine but connected to the theme? And I think Goring 20s is no shy of that. Goring 20s, I think, does that so well, no matter who comes into that zone. You know, in the beginning, everyone is always a little trying to find their place and everything. But I think once they get that down and once they kind of start seeing the interactions and the and the um and the energy from the other the other monsters, it, it becomes a whole another ball game at the point where people start really getting immersed into this, this storyline and really start and start rolling with it. And I've had, like I said, I've had so many great conversations with so many great monsters in the Goring twenties. And sometimes I can't believe what I, what I would hear, but it would just be, it would have me on the floor dying. Um, and, and, and just the incredible moments that I got to capture on camera, you know, with the Goring twenties, um, and everything, I, I just can't thank you guys enough for, for what you guys did this season. It, it's just, oh. it's one of my favorite zones. It's going to continue to be one of my favorite zones and I can't wait to see what comes with it in, in 51, but yeah, it, it, you guys did an incredible job this season. I, there's, there's no more to it. You had to be there to see it. It, it was something special. Well, thank you so much. I mean, but I got to say, like like you said, um, it's not just us as the actors. It is the designers. It is the makeup artists. It is the costumers. It is we are all, you know, we have this saying within Haunt, one team, one scream. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all going. We are all collectively going for yeah. that scare, you know. But it, it, it starts... It starts with the concept and it takes hundreds and hundreds of people to make that concept come to life. And I think if you're a good um, scare actor or even a good actor performer, you recognize that, that it's not just you. It's, you know, your writers, your directors, your concept artists, like everybody, everybody is a cog in or a part in this machine that presents as whatever show or production you're on and like any well-oiled machine it does not work without all parts working together working well working at the to the best of their ability it's like any car right if you want to really simplify the analogy you know if your tires aren't straight your your uh your brakes are going to suffer your struts are going to suffer that's going to suffer but put uh, lack on your engine and then ov the overall performance of your vehicle is going to falter if you do not recognize that every part is important your overall performance will suffer or it'll come from a place of ego and not that ego is unnecessary but egoic in the way that like is self-centered or conceit like it's not going to serve you in the long run people are going to see that right. eventually People are going to see that, like, nobody wants to interact with you. People are going to see that, like, oh, this person has an attitude or they don't want to interact with the guests. I've, an, I, unfortunately, not to be disparaging to anybody, but I've seen people be out there and negate the guest experience when that is the purpose of us being there is to make it the best show for the guests. And I will say that because I've been doing this for so long and I did start as a kid in my 20s, you know. I maybe had a season where I was just like, this is about my idea. And it's like, at the end of the day, like you're, you're, you're missing an opportunity to be, uh, to be more present and work in harmony, not only with your cast, but your crew and the designers, the, the wardrobe people, like you got to give everybody their flowers because to the guests, it's not just you. It's the whole right. show. We a lot of the scare actors or a lot of people at Han will have said Vicky has said it, you know, the King of the Gauntlet. Um, I know uh I've heard it said before that you can have haunt without street mm -hmm. monsters. You can clear those streets, but if you have mazes without monsters, it's just a house. Yeah. Um, if you have haunt without mazes. A lot of people, I'll never understand. I mean, it's their ticket money. Good on you. But when, if you come to sit in a Ghost Rider line for two hours, 
That is so many missed opportunities. Like, what I, are you I have doing? to tell you a story that about that. Here yeah. Every day. I got to tell you a story about that because I, I remember uh, we were waiting for rope drop one night and um, I remember I looked over to my girlfriend. I'm like, I can't because we were over here and kids are like, oh, we're going to go ride this ride and this ride and this ride. And I looked over at my girlfriend. I'm like, I can't believe that they spent a, a ticket to haunt just to ride rides that are here year round. A premium. And, and, and I just yeah. remember vividly someone in, in Forsaken, they're like, well, why do you come here? I'm like, I literally come here once a season and that's for Not Scary Farm because I love this place and I love watching you guys do what you do. And she was like, oh, and then just ran away. It was it was like to me. And that's I, I'm so glad you brought that up because I'm the same way. Like and uh, the only time I think I'll allow it is if uh, you have the fright and fast lane and then have a ball, you know, because it's just like you can you could you could do whatever you want. Unlimited. It's front of the line pass. But. If if I'm buying a ticket to haunt, the first thing I'm gonna make sure I get done with there is going to be all the mazes, all the zones, all the shows that I want to watch because those are only there for Scary Farm. Exactly one one they're only there for Scary Farm. The only time I will give a guest like okay, wait in a two hour line for a ride if they've done so back in the day, mine ride, yeah. log ride, they used to dress them, they used to put talent yep. in there. You, you know, and it wasn't the best position, but I would say it's probably akin to the most, uh, um, it would be akin to the most like controlled yeah. environment because the guests are literally just passing you by. So if that's like your very, very, very first season ever scare acting and you don't want to deal with the guests being able to like grab you and stuff, those used to be opportunities for, um, you know, uh, novice scare actors to learn the ropes um and i don't think mazes are uh, are necessarily a stepping stone onto the street some people never want to be on the street because the streets are unpredictable the streets are it's where you are liable to get the most hurt is where you are liable to get right. the most fucked with like because you literally have people all around you in a maze they're going yeah. right by you and you are able to rest. You are so we had a night last year that uh, Andrew and I went into room thirteen, and Andrew had never had time right. in mazes. So um, he was like, "Well, I want to do it. I want to check it out." And I was like, "You know what? I haven't been in a maze in quite a long time. Let's do it." And I had so much fun. We were in the billiard right. room in room thirteen, and I kept popping out of the the billiard the pool like table, the, that, right? little, that that spot yeah. with the strobe so he was standing in front and i kept like launching myself and literally like like just hurling myself <laughs> through this table and he was like you are literally throwing yourself through that thing and i was like well yeah because i have something to brace right. my fall i know how to fall i've done stunt training like i know how to keep myself safe but the guests don't know that. They just see me hurling myself at them. And it's so fun to get, like, it was so fun to revisit that. And it was so fun to, like, you know, the, the lines are, uh, are cute in a way where right. you can pause. So there was, like, a good 15, 25 minutes of just steady guest, steady guest, steady guest. We're in there sweating absolute buckets. And then all of a sudden it stopped and he goes, what happened? And I was like, oh, they're metering the line. And I was like, so I was like, we probably have a few minutes. And then the blackout was, was kind enough to kind of flash like, Hey, they're coming. And we're like, okay, cool. So right. then we could reset. We were able to get water. We were able to get a break. We were able to you yeah. can do that out on the street. You got to be real, real covert if you're right. going to do that out on the street, you know? And even in Goring, I will say, we do have our little spots behind the flower stand. We do have our little spots inside the newsstand that we utilize as our little respites um, in between all of right. the Right, yeah, I've seen people go in and out of, of the newsstand, but, you know, you guys, you guys do it in such a way where you go in in character and then, you, you know, you probably drop character for a little bit, take a little break, a little breather, but then you come right out and there's, like, someone arguing inside the newsstand, and I was like, Wow, they do that so wow. It's like the immersion just never broke. Yeah, they were away for a while to get that catch of that breath of fresh air real quick, but they came back out with it back strong like how they went in. I was like, so I'm 
I'm just completely sold that all they went in there to do is just go find something and then come back out. Like that's related to a story or something like you guys do that so well and, and get out of these, like in these areas, especially cause with, like you said, with the Goring twenties, there isn't a lot of places for you guys to, to hide at all. It's really those two spots. Everything is just mm -hmm. wide, wide open, you know? So to kind of, to kind of see mm -hmm. you guys get immersed into that, that, that zone and, and to really get immersed in those little things, even if you're going on that little break, man, I, I mean, it doesn't go unnoticed. I'm telling you that like everyone, everyone will call it out and, and see it. Everyone will just love to, and you know, you see it on TikTok later on. It's always, you see it everywhere. It's fun. So the first, the first year of the newsstand, um, we, uh, we said the, the newsstand was the most valuable player in the zone. It was the most valuable actor in the zone because everybody was utilizing it not just as the newsstand, but like we used to have to be able the drop door that was in the right. front underneath, like that would open and it was designed so that the sliders could come out, but it got built onto a curb. So you couldn't really do it, but that didn't <laughs> stop us from using it. And one night I literally got one of the best scares of my life. It was so good that I cackled so loud as it was me it was a hundred percent me not sister like because this guy he was busy looking at the newsie that was out front hawking right. his newspapers and the band was going and so his his vantage point was like totally focused on this one monster and i just crawled out of that bottom that bottom door with my bell and screamed at him that he i swear he jumped he jumped out of his skin it was straight cartoon he took off running and the smoke from his silhouette was still standing there and i just lost it i was like i cackled so i was crying on stage and everybody was like the two other people that were there with me were like Oh my God, did somebody get that on camera? And I was like, no, damn it. That was great. But then this last year, they boarded it up. Oh, boo. And we were angry. We were so upset. <laughs> we were like, what? Um, but the other thing that we did with it the first year is two of the grease monkeys, Frank and Boomer, they used it as a confessional. That's hilarious. And they were like, they were like, sister, we're collecting confessions. And so they would ask people, like, oh, confess your sins to the sister. And then, um, oh, okay, uh, you know, sister, I did this, that, and the other. Do you forgive me? And I'd be slam. like, nope, slam. And we'd slam the door. <laughs> oh, I would have been like, what just happened? I would have just been, like, so exactly. confused. I'd be like, what just happened? She just slammed the door on me. We didn't even get a finish. <laughs> That's amazing. Yep. It was so fun. I want to say one year, the jazz singer, the jazz singer at the time, Camion, who's right. now Queen in the Gauntlet, um, she and Clay were just in there dancing. They were in there dancing. So they would open the door. She'd be like twerking in or like flapping. Actually, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. She'd be popping <laughs> really like, woo, 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 as the band's going. And Clay's throwing dollars on her. And then they'd slam the door. And then, like, they'd wait a minute. They'd wait for a crowd to to, to 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 gather. They'd open it, and then they'd, like, start necking. And then, slam, close the door. And that's why we were, like, the newsstand yeah, is, like, Yeah, 100%. The MVP of the that's zone. the biggest, that's the biggest, yeah. That 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 newsstand should win, um, should win rookie of the year, should win monster, monster of, the year, of the year, everything. It oh, needs yeah. to have all the awards. Uh, just slap. Yep. Oh, yeah. And I still, I still have not... Just between me, you, and the listening audience, I still have not used. I have still about six ideas in the clip for that newsstand that I'm like, ever like if I don't do it, I want to give these to somebody because hey, they're they're just too good. Twenty twenty four seasons right around the corner. We're already close to halfway till there right now. So you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to I it. No, um, crazy. That being said, you know, how was it for you guys, uh, especially with celebrating the fiftieth? That must have been a huge for the uh, in the entire cast, obviously. But how was it for you guys on that final night on Halloween? Was it a very emotional one for you guys? Was it kind of like? damn, we made it another year. Like I can't, you know, I can't wait to get back and do it again next year. Or was it, how was it emotionally for you guys? 
Um, I mean, I can only speak for myself, right? I don't want to speak for the zone. Definitely don't want to speak for anybody right. else. Just speak out of turn. So for me, um, every year that I have been in Goring has been so much more emotional than I ever anticipate. Um, that first year, it was kind of like the opening of the zone and there were a lot of moments of doubt within that first season we didn't quite know what we were doing um you know at first it was like just act like we don't want any scary and then we they tried that for like the first weekend and we're like that's <laughs> not gonna work now do both and we're like okay now let's figure out how to do both um and so that first season it was super good to like just get through it and be like yes we opened the zone the second season, it was very like, um, it was very like, hey, we did it again. We got our footing, like, and we made all these new bits and all these new nuances to the zone. Right. Awesome. Oh, my God. We can't believe it's over. The 50th, um, I, I want to say it's on my Instagram. Uh, I don't think I ever even put up a wrap up, um, like a wrap up, uh, post like everybody usually does because i was so overwhelmed with how emotional right. it was and it was one of those things that we were waiting for whatever the big thing was going to be for our 50th and to be honest with you i don't really think we got anything new or bright or big in specific to the 50th i think i just lost her there we go there we go you know, oh my God, it's over. And I didn't do this. And I didn't work with that person. And I didn't do blah, blah, blah. And oh, I wanted to do this bit. And this didn't happen. So we're just trying to jam like another six weekends of stuff into this last night. Um, and one thing I did on the last night was I gave nice. the sisters sight. Um, if you look at the pictures, um, I changed out my contacts. And I wore... The same scleras that Talia Cole, who was my counterpart the first season, as kind of a nod to her, um, I, I wore those. But I went out there and I dressed people down in a whole different way. I was like, oh, my God, I can see y'all. Like, <gasps> somebody live, make me lose my, Jesus, take my eyes again. Like, I can't stand all the ugly around here. And just having that. I was so like, dang it, why didn't I do this before? And But sitting back and watching everybody um, interact, watching everybody hug each other, watching everybody do that last tiger crawl again, because you never right. know what the next season will bring. So you kind of got to honor what's happening in the present. Um, and I always want to say every night on the last night for myself, I find myself sitting there quietly grimacing at the crowd, but literally with tears coming down my face because as I'm watching, I'm watching the kids that have never done this before, like appreciate what they've done. I'm watching maybe the people that didn't necessarily want to get cast into goring all of a sudden miss it and be like, no, it's over. Um, you know, saying goodbye to the dancers and the band that night, saying goodbye to the regular guests that have come in that season and partied with us every night. So it, it's an it, it's always emotional. But I guess in specific in specificity, the fiftieth, I was under the impression that like, okay, the fifth fiftieth, all these people are are done. I'm probably done. So I was sitting there going <laughs> like, I'm not done. Like. <laughs> There's no way. I, I don't know what's going to happen next season, but, and, and just basking in like, wow, I was here for the 40th. I was here for, I want to say wow. the 25th was when I started. Um, and now I've made it to the 50th. Now that's not to say that I worked from the 20th to the 50th in concession. I didn't. Um, I have taken three, four seasons off a season off here and there. I've done a one-off season. That was my one-off season in Ghost Town. And, like, that was my plan at the end was that, like, I'm going to jump to Ghost Town. I was going to jump to Ghost Town this year. 
But something in the back of my brain was mm-hmm. like, I'm not ready to give up her. I'm not ready to give her up yet. She's too fun. She's just too fun. Um, so it's like, for me, getting to the 50th, being a kid that started in 2002 is like, if you would have told that kid, hey, you're going to be doing this for the 50th anniversary of this this event, I would have laughed in your face. There's no way I'm going to be on to bigger and better. Come to find out, is there bigger and better? Maybe. But I I, I, I I haven't found it yet. I like that right there. Is there bigger and better? Maybe, but haven't found it yet. So until I do, this is bigger and better for me. Um, Yeah. You know, I I, I absolutely. um, Exactly. I think it was a very emotional night across the board for everyone, uh, no matter where you were. Yeah, there was so much Especially going in on, Ghost Town. Um, and and so I, I wish I could have been at multiple places at multiple times because there's just you can't, <laughs> right? It's just it's so Me, impossible. I wish I could have been a guest. You just want to be everywhere, you just can't. But you know, I think when we when we made our final rounds that night, it was it was nice to see um, still the, the the energy and and the emotions in the air, but everyone having a great time and celebrating. Uh, one last night of the 50th before it's uh, it's gone forever and it's it's on to the next year, you know. So um, that being said, yeah. coming into 20, uh, 24, 51, going forward, a new era of not uh, scary farm going forward now, a new a new uh, on the road to the next 50. Um, are, 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 the, are the cards on the table? Can we see you come back this year? Is that a possibility? Is that something you want to do? It, what, like, uh, you know, because I, I don't think I can, I don't think I could see Goring 20s without you. Oh my God. Thank you so much. No, I've, I've honestly, I play all cards. I play all sides of, of, of whatever hand I'm dealt. And last year, Andrew and I one night were walking around and we were looking at predecessors. We were looking at like, who can do what we do in their own way. And I think there's at least three, four other sisters in that area. Like y'all don't see it. I see it. And I know, I know who I would confidently and lovingly hand my belt to. Um, like I told uh, JJ and Ross on their podcast, I'm not a spring little chicken. Um, I'm not a 22-year-old kid. I'm well, 42, 42 years, years old um, this year. <laughs> and it is... Huh? <laughs> Thank you. And But I would be remiss if I didn't mention people like Steve Vautre and Charlene the Green Witch, yeah. Jean, one of, the, one of the brides before Glow. They were older than me out yeah. there. We're killing it. So uh, can I say, and Josh, uh, you know, uh, my husband, he's my <laughs> biggest cheerleader. He's like, babe, don't you dare. Like you run circles around some of these kids. Like don't, don't sell, don't ever sell yourself short, but I don't know what, what comes with work. I don't right know there. what comes with, um, opportunity. Right. Um, I always tell people I do the Renaissance fair in the spring. The Renaissance fair has been right. my home and one of my favorite happy places now for since 2008. Um, and everybody asks, are you going to come back next year? If I'm living the dream, if I'm on a set with Kevin, if I'm on a I movie set with get, Tarantino. I just hope I get that invite. Guys, that's where I'm going to be. Both of those you know, that's the so bigger much. dream. They're like my, my all-time favorites, especially Tarantino. Right? exactly right like if i'm if i somehow got yeah, a bit part on the mandalorian and i got i had to be out <laughs> up in up north for a week yeah yeah right if, if favreau came a calling filoni guys i love sister faith Kevin but gives the call, i'm yeah, going Atlanta. i'm running um i would definitely <laughs> not prioritize <laughs> oh yeah absolutely a thousand um So that would be the only way if I couldn't make it happen. If it was this last year, it was a lot. Um, I might, if I do come back next year, I may have to take a week off of the day job and and cash in some of those vacation hours for my own sanity and my own health or do like the kids do now and just prepare these sliders, man. 
January, <laughs> February, they're at the rink already, and I'm like, God. <laughs> I'm over here still talking about the but past, and they're looking at the future. it speaks to not I'm only like, their dedication. No, we're not ready yet. Let, let me let me finish the past. Yeah. Exactly. Well, let, let let me rest. Let me catch my breath. Um, but if not, so have me. If the opportunity arises, if that is the best place for me for the overall show. Yeah, she'll be out there. She'll be out there preaching and addressing and a- wagging her finger, but, you know, dealing with Sal and Val on, on the back end or who one of the monsters or the mobsters will be at the time. Yeah. Um, just as long as we're all having fun, th- there's there's not a part, there's not a, a right. place 100%. in that part and that I, I won't I mean, I, give I, 110% I to. What everyone brings to the table. Um, oh. as far as all the zones, all the mazes across the board, I, I can't get enough. <laughs> Even the shows. The productions that, that that go on. I mean, everyone that's involved with that, whether you're behind the scenes or, or on the main stage, like you guys put on one of the greatest shows in the fucking world, and and we continue to to give give our money every single year because we want to support the event and and help it grow even more than what it can be, what it already is. Um, so yeah, you know, I I, I... oh good. Speaking to shows. I did I did the belly dance show. I've always wanted to be in the hanging. I've always wanted to there be in the is. big theater. If that I, opportunity I would, came I, up, I think you would fit amazing in the hanging. I would Let's be see. there in a heartbeat. I, I think there's so much, especially with that being sort of its own improv too, and oh, it's scripted. You. But of course, it's comedy. You know that that could be a lot of fun. <laughs> that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Carnival de Grotesque. That if if somebody wanted to hand me that bull whip, I could see that. I'd do I really it every can. night, every I night, really full, can. wholeheartedly. I really can. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited oh, to see you. what happens in 2024. Who knows what's going to happen in 2024? Two new mazes coming to the event, you know. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and to just uh, expand mm-hmm. on what we already you know set for the 50th, and and how do we go bigger and better for the next year, you know. You had two great mazes come in with Chilling Chambers and, and Cinema Slasher and 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 Room Thirteen, right. um, all great mazes coming in and 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 adding that backstory to the Goring Twenties and and Cinema Slasher doing what yeah. he did with that Chilling Chambers paying um, uh, homage to the to the past. You know, I can't wait to see what's next. You know, the storytelling with Knots always is just second to none. Me too. Absolutely. And seeing it evolve from when I started to what it is now, even just on social media, the fact that there are photographers roaming around, the fact that there's TikToks, the fact that there's podcasts that I'm on, you know, like it, it is insanity to me. And I just, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for a network to, to wise up and get their cameras back there. And because if you think the stories on stage are captivating, you should see some of the stuff that happens Trust backstage. Trust me, it's my dream. I think I've Nods could be its very own reality like show. For so long, because there's so many gr- like me and my girlfriend watch reality TV shows all the time, <laughs> and I'm like, and we talk about constantly how awesome it would be for one for Haunt just to get a behind the scenes look of everything, and then to follow certain people every day. You know, like mm-hmm. it, it would be so freaking fun. I, I, I would not. If you're listening next year, let's let's make it happen. I think it could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope to, that we do right? see you back uh, this year because, it, it, you know, like I said, I, I, I you know, it's, it's kind of hard to see Goring without you. But I, I, I feel like, like you said, they, there's, so, there's so many talented people there that it's going to be carrying on. But, you, I mean, you play a good role in that. You play a very important role in that, too. And, you know, to see that and, and to see what you've done with this character and everything, it, it has been insane. Thank you. And, and, you know, I, I know Talia as well. And what she did with the character was amazing. And then you took your you did your own spin on it. And. It's just been so cool. And I love, like, you, and you mentioned the glow and, and, and Gene about the bride. You know, they all had their different spins on it. Um, so I love it when characters are, are kind of constantly giving their own spins on, on, on things and, and kind of making it more original. Yep. And, and I thank you guys constantly for that. It's, it's really the immersiveness of, of this, of what you guys do that, that draws us in and kind of puts us in this story. Like, I, I can never be grateful for, internally grateful for that because that's the reason why I come to these events. I want to be put into a story and and i get put into many stories when i go to not scary farm so thank you guys so much for what you guys do in the yeah. boring 20s uh that's why we we decided to honor you guys in the month of march because 
yeah, I needed, I needed a, I needed to get back on, on hearing some amazing stories. I know there's so many out there, yours included. Um, and we, and I think we just, we just, we just got the tip of the iceberg with, with oh, your story. You. I mean, there's so, so much we could talk about and I'm definitely, I definitely want you to bring you back on for a future episode again. So we can, we can talk more about that because you have an extensive career. Yeah. I would be happy to. Thank you. Yeah. And it took a long time to honor that kid and be like, this is, yeah, scare acting is legitimate. This is a, this is a facet of my career that I honor. And yeah. I would be happy to talk about on a bigger scale to anybody um, because I, I'm not going to discount what we do out there. I'm not going to discount all of the, the evolution that, you know, the, not only the groundwork of all the vets that came before me laid, but the evolution that I right. see happening. Like, I, I can't be there forever. And watching kids, um, just even just the, the, the way that sliding has evolved. Slider teams, slider shows, slider shows in other parks. Um, just that facet of that started at Not Scary Farm. It didn't go. It was not anywhere else. It started at Not Scary Farm, and look at it now, and look where it's going to continue yeah, I mean, to go. Yeah, I mean, you talk about sliding. Man, it's in the limit, Germany, and it's I don't in even Japan, think the sky's and the they limit. know about Not Not Scary Farm. You know, that's where they looked at the videos at. You know, and it's just nuts to see that it's going global now. You know, and it's mm -hmm. it all started in Buena Park, California. You know, that's yep. this. That's insane, you know. Just like, just like some of the best bands you know out there, all started in Los yep. Angeles, California, or, or freaking in Orange County. You know what I mean? Huntington, yeah, you know. So it's 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 amazing. But Huntington Beach. I gotta ask you now. Now we're yep. getting a little bit closer to the end of the show. I want to ask you probably uh, the hardest question. Although you are a, a, a well, a well, uh, a well known um, movie fanatic, just like me. So it, it might be not as hard of a question, but. Uh, what is your favorite horror movie? Very much. So, I um I did get this asked recently and I will still say my favorite horror Ooh. movie growing up was classic. um Reanimator. Uh, it's a classic. It's based on an HP Lovecraft story. Great. Do you know it? Heck yeah. Yes. Yes. So that is probably my favorite. But when I walked away, I realized I was like, God, I haven't seen Reanimator in like seven years. I I would like to glean something probably a little bit more current. Um, for me, as an actor, as somebody who dreams of being on Ari screen Esther, one day he's, in he's, that capacity. Oh my God, he's such um, a visionary hereditary. director. I love. Ari Aster, I don't know what happened to you, friend, if you're listening, but I have a hug for you because all of your movies are, they are terrifying in a way We're that... We're for another one. We need another it, one. It is literally frightening. <laughs> it stays with you. Hereditary yeah, kid. absolutely. Absolutely, we need another one. But yeah, I would say Hereditary. The, the performances, the story, the... The makeup, the production. I was, I was the, obsessed the with jump that movie scares because of the fact that every time I watched kiss. it, like every time I watched it, I noticed something different, you know. And and it it, it it's really started with me and my uncle. We started Some. noticing little by little as the movie progresses. Yeah. Every single night, more and more people are showing up on those hills, standing in the trees, and I was like what the hell there's like they started with like two people then it became like a crowd mm -hmm. of people and then by the end it was everybody i was like what the hell is going on around like it was pretty cool i i, I thought he did an amazing job with that movie yep first of all give tony collette give tony collette her oscar give tony collette her oscar dang it we need to legitimize horror to the academy because there is let me tell you there's an entire market that is missed there. Jamie Lee Curtis should have gotten her Oscar eons ago. Secondly, um, but Tony's performance in that is like, yeah. and she started. I think yeah. her first movie she's was a, The Ring. She's so she good was at the what mom she in does. The like, no matter what role you put and her in, I think that in. was I mean, like I've her first in, big breakout. Uh, you know, I, even in like Knives Out, you know, which is a that murder, the murder oh, mystery. So 
so good in that too. But like everything she's in, she she's really she's really talented. Oh my I, gosh! I always get excited when I see her in a in a movie because I'm like, oh, it's gonna be probably pretty good then. But in Hereditary, I hadn't noticed the first time I watched it oh, when wow. she was up in the corner on the like where during the the fireplace scene. Oh, when I finally caught that, I was wa I was doing a rewatch by myself. I was, you know, comfort watching Hereditary, and I noticed it by myself in my house watching it in the dark, and oh, I immediately man. started yeah, to look I, at the corners that, of my that, house that like, for me with so many oh my movies. god, she's like, gonna I pop get, out right like, now. I get so paranoid when I go to sleep at night. I'm like, something's in the corner. Something's gonna pop up and get me. Um, I guess I was just traumatized as a kid, but I embraced it as an adult. So there we go. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's, 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 it's amazing, uh, to, to see oh, yeah. her performance in there. And I Esther, if you're watching this, um, give us another movie cause we're, we're very desperate for an, another one. Um, <laughs> we need another one. I need to get scared yeah, in the please. theaters like that again. Yeah. Yeah. Midsummer was so good. Cause midsummer. Right. I love that, that sort of quiet, suspenseful. Yeah. I mean, I love me some gore. Give me some Evil Dead. Give me some, you know, Sam Raimi. Absolutely. But there is something to that suspense and that absolute quiet frightening. And I, I mean, I guess you could say, like, that's that's kind of how I like to scare act, too. I am. Is she big and, and, and loud? Yeah, psychological but, horror is, is you one know, of my favorite subgenres of the horror too, genre. And, because and I love it. you never know where it can take you. You know, you could just be thinking one thing the entire time and then it ends and it's like a whole different scenario. And I'm like, damn, that's that's insane. Yeah. Um, Jenny, where can they find you on social media if they want to continue to follow your journey right. and your adventures? And 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 you're, you're just it sounds like you got a really well. Uh, longevity career. So where can they find you to see all the, the uh, exciting moments of it? <laughs> you know what? Just, just to glean from the sister, from your yeah. lips to God's ears, let's hope, let's hope, let's let's put that out there, let's manifest that, let's, all of that. Um, but uh, I'm Zombie Jen on... Um, all of my socials, the only problem is, mm. is somebody on Instagram had yeah. to steal Twitter. the actual, so on, on X, uh, X, <laughs> uh, Twitter, um, I'm zombie gen as it is spelled, uh, right? Thank you. Um, Z O M B I E J E N N. Um, on Instagram and on, uh, I believe TikTok, I'm zombie gen Z O M B E E J E N N. Um, and then my Facebook, I just have a personal Facebook, um, and I tip, I don't have like a public page or anything. I do have a dancer page under Jen and Aguilar, but it's literally belly dance. Maybe I'll start using that as a public figure page just because my personal Facebook page is reserved for like my family, friends, people I've met in real life. Um, but yeah, on Instagram, zombie Jen, um, and on um nice there X, it is uh well jen Twitter, i want to thank you so much for being gen, part of the celebration a of a trip down memory lane for the month of march and uh we we appreciate uh everything you guys do in the goren 20s and we, and we love the goren 20s thank can't you. wait to see <laughs> what happens next year with the goren 20s uh, or this next season should be a lot of fun can't wait indeed um but for those yeah. you guys brent yeah can't it's gonna wait. be a fun one 51 here we come uh, Definitely for, excited For those who are brand new to the channel Thank you guys for uh, tuning in for the first time If you guys are new, hit that subscribe mm -hmm. button and that like button Leave some comments down for Miss Jenny She uh, is a wonderful talent on the streets You can watch the videos But I, I, I guarantee you, if you see her in person There's nothing that compares to it The videos don't do justice You gotta Thank see you. it in person <laughs> You gotta see it in person <laughs> Oh my goodness Thank you so much. Yeah, I know there's TikToks. I know there's TikToks out there. Right. I hate... So, in classic actor form, I hate watching footage of myself. I hate watching. But I have seen them. Um, so, they're out there. Uh, so, if you want to see Sister Faith I, I, I'm the same way about my, my stuff. Like, unholy I, I, glory. I don't like listening to myself. It's out there. <laughs> re watching podcasts. I'm just like, uh, I don't mind the guests. I just don't like hearing, hearing me. Oh, man. 
Thank you so much. I I I uh, I, I I really do try. Um, <laughs> well, but, I think you, know, you sound great. I'm, I'm I'm me. So you know. Uh, with that being said, though, we we appreciate all of you guys watching watching today and and supporting uh, a trip down memory lane for Goring Twenties Month. Uh, stay tuned next week. We got more Goring Twenties content for you guys and more stories down memory lane to tell. But until then, stay spooky. Yeah.